Friends and family of YouTube, back so soon? This is weird, eh? Three videos, four videos in a week? It's crazy. It's not like myself, is it? I told you I was going to upload more videos, and here I am. So, be grateful. Um, this video is one I should have done a long time ago because a lot of JDM Subarus probably experience the same issue. And that issue is when I first got this beautiful car, um, it was great. And then probably 2000 kilometers in, I'd notice every once in a while, full boost, it would go into limp mode, no check engine light or anything. It would just half the boost. So I don't know why my lights are being super freaking weird, but anyway, it would go into half boost. So instead of running 1.4 bar, it would be 0.5 bar. Um, and I just couldn't put my finger on what the hell was happening. So what I did is I got it tuned, right? Cause in Japan they're tuned on a 98 Ron, I think. And I think that's like 96 octane or 95. But here we get 94 if you're lucky and, or 91. And I wanted to tune this thing on shell 91 so I actually got it tuned on shell 91 and it was still, still was happening. So I ended up changing my air filter and I took the math out just to check and I found the problem. So the problem happened today. Me and my wife just got back from a nice long drive, grabbed some Starbucks and I was boosting, the car was running great. And then all of a sudden I felt the, you know, the boom. And then I tried again. I'm like, oh, that didn't feel right. And sure enough, I halved my boost. So what I'm showing you guys today, it's a good idea to check this every oil change. Whether or not you feel the power loss, this is the only thing on this car, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Um, I may be wrong, there might be a map sensor, but I don't think there is. But even if there is, this works alongside the map sensor. Some cars only have a map, some cars only have a map, some cars have both, so the Supra, only has a map sensor from factory, has a math sensor. Standalone, different car. Stock car, math sensor. This is mainly what's telling your engine how much fuel to pump in. And when the boost comes on strong, it's sucking more air in and it needs to calculate that. So if that's not reading right, then obviously the car's not gonna be happy. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you one more thing. Tyler's car is a very nice STI very high-end zero sports parts all over. I almost think it was a zero sports car because it has everything, but he was having the same issue sort of worse. And I told him, I'm like, Tyler, clean your math. Oh, I did, I did, I did. I'm like, no, Tyler, clean your math. I did, okay, so I, whatever. When he was here, I took his math out and his was dirty. So his car is now fixed because of cleaning his math. So I'm gonna show you guys how dirty that is. If you can see, it has a thick, thick layer of film on it. And that's just everything that goes past the air filter. I do not have an oiled air filter in there. I have a paper air filter, I promise you. That's the other side. So the other side has a glimmer to it and you can kind of see through it and you can see the metal, right? This side, can't even see the shiny metal. And this is common. So every oil change, and I just did an oil change on this thing and I did not do this, um, just slipped my mind. So every oil change, I'm going to clean my math. I do not know why Subarus get really dirty like this. I don't know if it's just, mine, I have a factory intake system, bone stock. Nothing is taken out, nothing. Uh, it could be just because we have really, really, really thick dust on the roads right now. And in summer, it just takes a lot longer to accumulate because this, this is pretty, this is gross, uh, like really gross. So I'm going to clean this and I'm going to show you guys what I do to clean it. All right, guys. So you want a very, very clean Q-tip or something equivalent. You want your math. So I'm going to put the Q-tip in my mouth for now just to hold it. And you want a sensor, something like this where it says mass airflow sensor cleaner. This is what you want. It's not working very well. So you do not want to clean your math with WD-40, brake clean, anything. 
um, just because it can damage them. Uh, I know it works here and there. I've done it myself and I've gotten away with it. But just to be safe, use something like this. So I'm gonna douse this thing because mine is filthy. Like even the drops were black. So it even has some temperature sensors in here that I'm just gonna spray. Again, I got no check engine lights. It's just the car was like, hey, you should probably clean me now. And I'm gonna run half boost until you do. And I'm okay with that because I want my car to run tip top and I want my STI to be, you know, last. My STI is very, very fast. Um, for a stock-ish car. As you've seen, the engine was stock and my tuner who tuned the Supra tuned it. And uh, it is very, very impressive for a stock car. It's just an awesome, very enjoyable vehicle to drive. The six speed in it is, it has a short shifter in it and it's just a joy to drive. Don't, don't know how else to put it. So yeah, I'm gonna flip it over and do the clean side. And this is gonna be, it's already way cleaner. You can see, you can see the difference already. So like, so that's what was still on it after it dripped off. Like, look at that, that is pure disgusting. And then this is a secondary wash and that was both after I sprayed it and let the dirt drip off. So use this CRC sensor clean from Canadian Tire. This was 15 bucks, 16 bucks, and it's lasted me probably two years. So, but you can see that the metal is now shiny. See, look at that. That's the same side. It was literally black before. So now that this is clean, I'm just going to give it a couple minutes to dry. Then I'm going to reinstall it and show you guys what I do. Be sure not to damage your O-ring. Tyler did damage his. So we're going to uh, order a kit of O-rings. So we'll never have to worry about that again. Before I put this guy back in the car, I just want to show you guys the math. So that's what it should look like, right? Focus. There it is. And it does on the other side now. It was black. It was black. And there's temperature sensors in there that are clean. So that's what it should look like. And I'm going to go install this bad boy. All right, guys. So here's the math. I'm going to just slide it in there. And you can feel the O-ring seat. Nice. Boom. There it is. So here's the screws. You want to avoid stripping or losing these screws, it is very hot right now because we're sitting on the coolant reservoir, which was not a smart idea, so don't do that. Ah, ah, hot potato, hot potato. Okay, there's the other one. You don't want to over tighten these screws, it's just going to plastic inserts, metal inserts in plastic. So do not over tighten, but you know, tighten them up, should be snug. Right? When you start to feel the screwdriver not wanna stay in position, that's when you stop. I I think I found that position. I'm just gonna double check. There. And this one just a little bit more. There we go. And then you wanna plug it back in. Now on this car, I've never had to uh, unplug the battery while I do that. Wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm just gonna start the car now and make sure that there's no check engine lights. And then we will uh, conclude everything because it's done. It's, it was that easy. Ugh. 
so just open okay so good to go good as new and you can see that I just got back from a long drive so I literally just just felt the little blip and then I saw that my boost was only going to 0.5 bar versus a full 1.2 1.4 bar and I thought it was time to clean the math and I was right so that's all it takes to clean your math but it is extremely important and you should all be checking your maths at least every oil change um, when I get the Forester, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go through all the stuff I've learned from owning Subarus, uh, this SDI in particular, with the math. And, uh, you know, I should be good to go. And I just, you know, that's probably why I don't have a cone filter on it yet, is because it would probably get dirtier a lot quicker. I have a stock airbox on it. It's got that dirty. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure enjoy showing you this stuff. So if you uh, if you enjoyed the video, give the video a thumbs up. Think about looking at other videos on the channel. I got lots of this stuff to go through. So uh, I'm going to sign out. All right. Peace, everybody.